If it's above 100%, it is excellent. So last year, it was still good. But this year, it went up to 123.4%. 21% stronger bones in a year at age 62? Yes, it's possible. No calcium supplements needed. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. So, I got the result from my bone mass test. So today, I'd like to share my result with you and how I improved my bone in just one year in my 60s. So please watch the video until the end. At age 62, 21% increase in bone mass compared to last year at age 61. So I took this bone mass test that the one that I used is called quantitative ultrasound of bone, QUS. So it's not the most common test like DEXA, which is, you know, this style that you sort of lie down. Uh, so it's not as accurate as this one, but still it, it roughly tells you about your bone mass. And in my case, I took the same test last year at A61, and I took it again this year. So I can compare the difference between the two. I can see the improvement. And that is a critical information. Um, so for the trabecular bone area percentage at A61, it was 34.5%, but this year, 41.6%, which is a 7% increase. And then T-score, 0.24, went up to 2.32, increased by 2.08. And then compared to young adult mean, this is the most critical figure. Uh, it means compared to the average peak bone mass of a young adult. So, the average peak bone mass of a young adult is about 100%. So last year, it was already above 100%, 102.4%. .4 Usually, if it is below 80%, you need to pay attention to your bone loss. But if it's above 80%, it is okay. And if it's above 100%, it is excellent. So last year, it was still good. But this year, it went up to 123.4%, which is incredible 21% increase. And then Z score last year, 1.59. This year, 3.74, increased by 2.15. And compared to age match, like comparing to my own age group, it was 118.6% last year, and this year, 143.9% increased by 25.3%. So I am very shocked myself. I'm very surprised. I didn't know how much you can improve in one year. Because usually at this age, I mean, in your 60s, it decreases, right? But if you could maintain the same score as last year, you should be happy. But in my case, I improved it by 21%. I think it is incredible. I'm very surprised myself. And this is a good news for you because if I could do it, that means anyone can do it, even in your 60s. It's not too late to you know, take measures. It's not too late to change your diet or start exercising, you can always improve. So how did I improve it? I improved it through diet and exercise. Now, you know, I have been doing this biohacking lifestyle for a while, for about three years. I sort of officially started my Ikigai biohacking lifestyle in 2021. Before that, maybe 2017, I started going Nordic walking, cycling, 
and I've been eating natto for the last 10 to 15 years and, and things. But each year, my knowledge is increasing. Each year, I'm learning a lot of new things. And I didn't know much about bone health up until about a year ago. So the last time when I took that test, I didn't know enough about bone health. So I was exercising. I was in a pretty good diet, but still, I didn't know what kind of food was good for the bones and what kind of exercises were beneficial for the bone. And I learned that, then I applied my knowledge in the last year. So that result was based on this lifestyle change. So how did I change? Now, for diet, I paid attention to four nutrients, calcium, vitamin K2, vitamin D, magnesium. By the way, I don't take any supplement. I don't take calcium supplement, but I don't take any vitamin supplement or anything else. No supplement at all, only from food. Now, talking about calcium, a lot of people think, you know, bone health, of course, calcium, you need calcium. That is true, but calcium is not the only thing. In fact, it is more important to have the balanced diet, to have other nutrients that support the absorption of calcium, such as vitamin K2, vitamin D, and magnesium. And so how I take all those nutrients are, for calcium, I eat a lot of fish, especially small fish, such as sardines. Niboshi, which are even smaller than sardines, and jacko, that's even smaller than niboshi. All those fish are small enough that I can eat the bones as well. So I eat fish and bone. Even when I eat slightly bigger fish, such as macro, I pressure steam it so that I can eat the bones too. So I always eat fish and bone. And then for vitamin K2, of course, I eat natto. I eat natto five days a week. And for vitamin D, fish contains a lot of vitamin D. Plus, I work out in the morning outdoor, so I get morning sunlight exposure. The sunlight is good for vitamin D. So both the sunlight, fish, and I eat a lot of mushrooms. I eat mushrooms every day. And for magnesium, now there are many foods that contain high amount of magnesium, but especially seaweed. In Japan, whenever we talk about magnesium, we think of seaweed. And I eat a lot of seaweed, such as nori. And when I have miso soup, I always put wakame in the soup. And then sometimes I put hijiki in my salad. So I eat a lot of seaweed. So... The combination of all those foods is helping my bones. But the idea is I did not necessarily think about all those nutrients so much. I mean, I did pay attention to a little bit, but my diet, which is the Ikigai diet, is basically thinking of all aspects of health, such as muscle health, gut health, of course, brain health, heart health, everything. And so try to just eat well for everything. By doing it, it end up helping the bones too. Um, the bottom line is I have been eating magoa yasashi koku, which is the guideline of the ikigai diet. So it means beans, nuts and seeds, seaweeds, vegetables, fish, mushrooms, tubers, whole grains, and fruit. So I try to eat a wide variety of ingredients from each category as much as possible within a week. I, I told you that I eat mushrooms every day and I eat seaweed every day. So I try to try to find something from each category as much as possible, not necessarily every single category, uh, to cover in a daily meals, but within a week, I try to cover everything, and yes, I try to cover everything within a week, and then even within a day, I try to cover as many categories as possible. That is the key to improve your overall health, your gut health, 
heart health, brain health, muscle health, and bone health. So as a result of this, uh, I end up improving my, my bones too. This is my dietary secret. So the secret is eat mago wa yasashi koku. And how about the exercise? Right. So I have been exercising, but last year I didn't know enough about exercises which are good for bones. But now I know and I started applying for it. Okay, so what kind of exercises are good for the bones? According to National Institute of Arthritis and Musculoskeletal and Skin Diseases, weight-bearing exercises. These exercises produce a force on bones that make them work harder. So these exercises are considered to be good for the bone, such as walking, jogging, tennis, pickleball, badminton, basketball, anything that when you run, you have an impact on the bone, and that is critical. In my case, I go jogging. Before, I was going Nordic walking, but I changed to jogging partly because of the impact on the bones. Nordic walking is good. Walking is good for the bones too. But jogging is slightly better because of a you know, stronger impact on the bones when you run. And last year, I was already jogging, but not so much for the bones, for the cardio fitness aspect, for the zone two exercise. But uh, zone two exercise. Then I was doing about uh, 90 to 130 minutes a week. But this year, whether well, the last year or so, I increased it to 150 minutes a week. Because partly because of the bones. I, I now know the benefit of jogging to the bones too. The next type of exercise good for the bones are resistance training exercises or strength training. They add resistance to movement to make muscles work harder and become stronger. These exercises put stress on bones so they can make bones stronger as well. Muscles and bones are kind of tied together, so they support one another. So by doing strength training, you can also improve your bones too. Uh, in my case, I do squat. I do squat about three times a week, and then... Once a week, I do a lot of jumping. Now, jumping is a kind of weight-bearing exercise, but the intensity is stronger. Therefore, it has a sort of strength training, strength has a strength training effect as well. Then I do jump box using one of those bench. I do jump box and I do step ups uh, and things. And then I do sprinting. So sprinting, because of the higher intensity, um, it becomes a kind of a strength training as well. Then this park is located on top of a hill. So to get there, I had to climb up the hill. Then after the exercise, I go down the hill. So I kind of do a trail running. Very short distance though, but I go up and down the trail running, especially when I run down I feel strong impact on the bones, and I think this is very effective. However, I don't advise you do that unless you are very fit, because it has higher risk of falling. Yeah, Trail running can be very good for the bones, but it has a higher risk of falling too. So you need to prepare for it, depending on fitness level. You need to think of right exercise for your fitness level. Next type of exercise is balance training. It is especially important for older adults. It can improve balance and help prevent falls. Now, why do you need strong bones? Because you want to prevent falls. Um, now, injuries from falling are one of the major causes of death among senior citizens. The reason why I am working on my bones is precisely this. I want to prevent uh, falls. And therefore, you need a muscle strength and you need the bone strength. Uh, in case if you fall, if, if the bones are stronger, you are 
you have a less risk of injuring yourself. Um, but the best thing is not to fall. And, by, to, and to not to fall, you need to balance. You need to balance and flexibility. So I do this kind of like standing one uh, foot type of exercise. And I do a lot of Qigong exercises, which include a lot of balance training. And then for flexibility, I do a lot of stretching. I do yoga. And I also do a lot of joint rotation, like a shoulder, you know, rolling, and then, you know, the knee rolling, um, elbow rolling, too. Fing fingers and toes, toe stretch, finger stretch. I do many things. This is my exercise routine. Monday, zone two jogging for 45 minutes. Tuesday, body weight, heat, and flexibility for 20 minutes. Wednesday, zone two jogging for 60 minutes. Thursday, body weight, heat, and flexibility for 40 minutes. So that's when I go to the hill and do sprint and jumping and so on. So, so it's extended workout day. Friday, zone two jogging, 45 minutes. Saturday, body weight, heat, and flexibility for 20 minutes. On top of that, I go grocery shopping by bicycle, and that becomes a good leg workout as well, three times a week. And then I do some gardening too. For details about my exercise, please watch this video from sprint to jumping, additional outdoor exercises for over 50. So I eat natto, and natto is the key in many ways, especially the combination of natto and exercise is critical. For details, please watch my other video. It is called natto and exercise, a powerful combo for strong bones. In many ways, natto is incredible. It is great for bones, but not only that, it's good for your muscles, it's good for your heart, it's good for your brain, and it's good for your gut. It has a comprehensive nutrient. I have never seen any other food that has so many health benefits, so, so complete superfood. For details, please read Natto Unleashed. And the book contains other information such as recipes and where to buy natto, DIY natto, navigating natto's taste, and natto hacking. Therefore, how I improved my bone in one year is through diet and exercise. And if I could do it in my 60s, so can you. You can do that too. However, I didn't say one thing. There was another measure I did, but this is only for the last three months, not the entire year. So I don't know how much it has contributed, but I have a feeling this one measure that, I, uh, that I've taken in the last three months has contributed a lot to my, my bone mass improvement. And in the next video, I'll share about it. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Sachak Takamiya, the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. What do you do for your bone health? Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with your Ikigai!